So I'll move into the first slide right away. So there you see our little logo. It's quite a, a logo to, for you to identify this tool very quickly. Uh, we're going to watch a video that introduces this, um, this tool. We call them DHIS2 standard modules for entomology and vector control. They are just a configuration that can be done within DHIS2 to capture entomological data and data from vector control interventions. So let's watch the video, which is going to introduce it better than any slide. And then I'll keep talking about them a bit more. So this is the video. Let me change the resolution. Okay, there we go. Is this one the right one? Let me increase the sound. Oh, sorry. This is the link. One second, let me find the link to the new one. Sorry for that. Um, So we just got a new version of this video yesterday night. So I want to show you the, the clean version of the video. Okay, so there we go. There we go. Let me change the resolution to maybe 360 so that there is no delay. The image is not gonna be as neat as with higher resolutions, but hopefully uh, this resolution will allow you to watch it. Um, so I'm going to increase the sound of my computer and share my screen again, uh, sharing the sound of it so that you can hear the sound of the video. Just one second. There we go. So now you should be able to hear the sound. If you don't, just let me know, OK? If you don't hear the sound, just let me know, and we will increase it. Uh, can, can you okay. please make the video on full screen? Yeah, there we yes, go. Thanks. Okay. So it's only two minutes. It okay. is becoming increasingly important to guide and optimize the deployment of vector control interventions. The DHIS2 standard modules for entomology and vector control have been developed to support vector-borne disease programs to collect, interpret, and use entomological and vector control data in line with WHO recommendations. These modules help you monitor insecticide resistance, adult vector species and their densities and behaviors, vector breeding sites and larval source management, ITN distributions and IRS campaigns, and ITN bioefficacy and IRS residual efficacy. The modules can be integrated into your existing DHIS2 implementations, minimizing maintenance costs and allowing for the integration of entomological data with epidemiological data. Whether you are in the field, in the laboratory, or in an insectary, you can collect data and send it to DHIS2 using your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. In places with poor internet connection, you can collect data offline and send it later once connected to a network. Not only can you collect your own data prospectively in DHIS2, no, you can no. also collect data from partners and integrate historical data into the system. Once in DHIS2, you can review and validate the data, visualize it in automatically generated maps, graphs and tables and create and share thematic dashboards tailored to inform specific decisions. This free tool can help you transform entomological and vector control data into information that will help guide and optimize the deployment of vector control interventions in a timely and efficient manner. Visit our website and download the DHIS2 entomology and vector control modules today. Oh. Okay, so that's the video that, um, let me go back to the presentation, uh, that uh, gives an idea of what these tools are. We, you saw the activities, uh, people doing activities in the field and in sectary. Uh, you saw how this data can be collected uh, in a mobile phone, in a tablet, in a computer. You saw that the data is automatically transformed into uh, graphs, into maps, into tables. Uh, so that you can see it with no, no effort. You don't have to invest time in analyzing the data because you will be automatically, uh, the system will be automatically generating those visualizations. Um, 
I'm going to uh, guess uh, this presentation is going to be shared. So I outline here a bit of the purpose. Uh, so the purpose is like, as, as you see in the video, is the collection and collation of data, uh, entomological data and data from vector control interventions. But it's also the joint interpretation with epidemi epidemiological data. The centralization and har harmonization of data, because there is often many partners in a country collecting data, as you see here in the picture, and the data is not put together. And if we don't have the data together, we don't have the big picture uh, of what is happening with the vectors in our country. So this allows uh, you to compile the data and put it all in the same place in, in this uh, DHIS2 system. And then, uh, which is something we'll be talking about in a second, it can facilitate reporting of data to uh, WHO. And this is just the, the important, the very relevant data, um, like the data related to biological threats, such as insecticide resistance, or the spread of invasive vector species. So you can also use this tool to report data to WHO, which often happens in a, in a separate process. And often uh, you all have to invest uh, time filling in forms, et cetera. So if you use uh, these modules, you can push the data from your modules to WHO. And if you don't use them, the, there is a way for you to report data through these uh, DHS2 systems uh, a bit more easily and independently. Uh, here you have a, a list of activities that are uh, uh, that are available, so that these modules are supporting. No? So we have data collection forms, and uh, there are dashboards, and there are automatic ways of generating data, generating visualizations for all of these activities. And one that I wanted to highlight uh, is the ability to collect individual mosquito data, which is useful when you are collecting uh, laboratory results. So in this system, you can have like a, a list of the vectors that you are collecting in the field, individual vectors one by one, and then you can send uh, the list to a lab. The lab can uh, enter the results of like ELISA or sporozoite detection methods, uh, molecular uh, species identification methods, and you can bring them back to the system. So you can control, you can have all of these individual mosquito data inside of the system with individual unique identifiers, if you have barcodes for your mosquitoes, you can scan the barcode of the mosquito, et cetera. So there's a lot of uh, capabilities for, for doing that. This, I don't need to go into it because we, you saw it on the, on the video, but you can probably, it's good to highlight that you can collect data offline and you can collect data through mobile devices, tablets, uh, or through a computer. So that's quite a useful functionality. And here you see some of the visualizations that this uh, system can generate. So here you see, for example, uh, residual efficacy, the, the monitoring of IRS residual efficacy. So what you see in these lines is the vector mortality, the mosquito mortality in the cones that you use for monitoring IRS. And you can see it decaying over the months. So this graph is automatically generated when you enter the results of the combi OSs. Here you have a map. Uh, and this map is showing the status of insecticide resistance. I'm, I'm using Spain, my country. As a, as a demo country, but we don't have malaria in Spain, just, it's a, just a demo. Uh, so when you enter, for example, uh, results of insecticide resistance monitoring by OSs, like uh, the tube, WHO tube test that you may be familiar with, they are automatically transformed into a map where you can see in red places where there is resistance in the vector population and in green uh, places where there is not resistance. And you can have these maps by a species or for all species together, et cetera, et cetera. This is another map also used in Spain as an example, where we can map, for example, the, the coverage of distributed of, of nets, so nets per person, or we can also map the number of nets that we have distributed in different areas of our country. Uh, you can generate tables automatically as well. So in this one, um, we are also showing uh, the mosquito mortality from insecticide resistance monitoring test, but in number. So here we know which is the percentage of mosquitoes, the mean or the median percentage of mosquitoes that died in our um, WHO tube test, for example. And you can also generate uh, bar plots like this one you have in here. And this one uh, is showing the mosquitoes collected per month. So this is a density, density of mosquitoes. And you see in the same graph, you can have a couple of species. I have Arabiensis, Gambiases, and Funestus. You could have the species that are relevant in your country. Just wanted to give you like a, a taste of the kind of visualizations you can configure to have automatically generated by the system. These, I don't want to go into details, but just wanted to say that there, is, there are tools to support the implementation of this tool. 
And maybe one important one for you is the training app. So the training app is an application that is going to teach you how to enter data in DHIS2, how to make some of these graphs so that they are there and they can start to be gen automatically generated when you enter data. Uh, it teaches you how, do you how you can configure a dashboard with multiple graphs. So it's like a little easy training tutorial so that you get started with uh, DHIS2 if you are not familiar with it yet. Uh, and then there is other stuff. Uh, there is this application, this tool to upload data that, that you can use for historical data, for example, to start uploading historical data into the system. Uh, this application that you can use to report data to the WHO um, in case uh, you want, you're using DHIS2, you want to report uh, insecticide resistance data, uh, which is what we ask for every year. You can use this application to push directly from your DHIS2 the data into, uh, into WHO's uh, systems. Then you have one application to integrate um, entomology, um, climate data. So if you want to have some climate data, not only for understanding the oscillation in your vector population, but also for uh, comparing it with like cases, for example, malaria cases. You can bring in climate data and you can bring rainfall, temperature, humidity, land use, uh, land uh, NDVI and other uh, different types of data. And the other ones, um, it's too complicated. I, I won't uh, talk about them, but I wanted to make sure that you, you know these tools are available. So now we have a little case study. I hope we have probably like 20 minutes left. Is, is this correct, Samira? We have at least 20 minutes left? We have more, we have more, we have Great. 30 minutes. Okay. Perfect, okay, that's even better because I wanted to go uh, into the HS2 live. We are going to see the system live uh, to accomplish this exercise that you see on the screen and which is also homework for you to try to do alone at home. Um, the exercise is about understanding how to fill in results of one specific type of test uh, that we do in entomological surveillance, which is uh, discriminating concentration bioassays to monitor insecticide resistance. And I uh, chose here IADES vectors because I know the training is about uh, arboviruses. So wanted to make uh, you aware that you can also uh, use it for IADES vectors, all, all of these digital tools that I am explaining. Uh, I wanted to show you um, how to download uh, Excel templates, which is important for two things. It's important uh, if you have the HIS2 in your country and you want to collect data from your partner institutions, from research institutions, for, from other NGOs, or organizations in the country, which may be collecting data, you can share with them these standard templates that will allow you to then import the information back into, into your system. Uh, it's also important because if, um, as, we, as I said before, we ask for insecticide resistance data every year, because we are monitoring uh, these big threats uh, globally, and you will see uh, all the data in Malaria Threats Map uh, later today. And uh, one uh, way for you to report this data is to use these uh, Excel simple templates to fill them in and import the data into the WHO global DHIS2 platform, uh, where we collect data uh, for multiple diseases actually um, uh, to monitor different things, to monitor burden of disease, to monitor biological threats in this case. Uh, then uh, we're seeing, uh, we're going to see how to fill in the template and where to click to upload the template back into the HIS2. We are going to see uh, how to create a table with the bioessay. So how once we have the data inside, how we can configure a table that will be then automatically generated. We only have to create it once to configure the table once, and then it will be always there and it will be updated with the new data we collect and how to create a dashboard. So I'm gonna go into the system um, a quick way for you to access the, the demo, we have a demo that is open, you can all go into it, is by coming into our website uh, for these uh, digital tools and clicking here on the DHIS2 standard packages demo. That will take you to a live demo. The page also gives a lot of information on uh, the type of activities these tools can support with a few examples uh, and visualizations, in this case, like for breeding sites, for example. And on the right hand side, you have the list of all of these applications that I mentioned with the links to the place where you can get them, download them, et cetera, et cetera. Some training videos and a lot of resources there. But I'll go straight into the demo. This is the HIS2. 
Uh, I'm sure you are familiar with it. Uh, you've seen this logo uh, before. Um, it's just a normal DHIS2, uh, which is configured to collect entomological and DHIS and vector control data. So you have here a user in English and another user in French that you can use to access the system and explore it. Uh, this is like free credentials. So you just go use them and you can enter the system. I'll use my credentials now so that we can see a bit more um, of the system. And right away, when you enter into DHIS2, the first thing you see is uh, are the dashboards. So as I said, you can create your, your own dashboards and you can decide what graphs, maps, tables, uh, line plots you want to have in the dashboards because they are relevant for whatever decisions you want to take. So as an example, we have um, a little dashboard with uh, entomological surveillance data, which shows uh, densities, number of mosquitoes per month, the biting times of the mosquitoes, if you are monitoring biting times, human biting rates, sporozoite rates, parity rates that somebody was mentioning before, entomological inoculation rate, right? So you can have these graphs uh, generated automatically for different vector species, for different times, uh, periods, etc. There is another dashboard uh, that will allow you to map your breeding sites. So if you're mapping breeding sites, you can click uh, and see where these breeding sites are to plan your uh, larvae siding uh, campaigns, for example. You can see densities, uh, number of larvae pupae per breeding site type. Uh, we can see uh, pupae, so da, da, da. and you can see as well uh, a little table with summaries of the number of breeding sites that we uh, surveyed, the number of positive breeding sites, the proportion of positives, the density uh, in these sites in the different places of our country, in different months of our country, of, of our surveillance period. Um, the number of treated breeding sites, if you're also treating them, you can monitor how many have been treated. And again, all of this is automatically generated once you fill in the data collection forms uh, in DHIS2. There is another one on insecticide resistance. Uh, so you have the maps that I explained before. So in places where vectors are resistant versus places where vectors are susceptible. And this is the legend, confirmed, possible, susceptible for different insecticide classes, although you can also do it for different insecticides. And then we have uh, the results of the bioassays of mosquito mortality for different species and for different uh, sites in our country uh, as a bar plot, for example. And then we also have some tables here with the actual mosquito mortality in bioassays for different sites in our country, for different insecticide classes, and for different years. That can be configured in, in so the order of the columns, everything can be configured. Then we have some, one, some dashboards showing campaign results. So you can monitor, um, in this case, is, um, the percentage of protected people uh, of those targeted uh, with an IRS campaign. And you can also see the percentage of structures sprayed per area. So, and the percentage of people protected side by side on the same bar plot for different uh, spray areas, operational areas in your country. Uh, you have a summary of the campaign uh, with like structures found, the structures sprayed, percentage of structures sprayed, people living in, in the spray area, uh, people protected, etc. And you can also have, as I saw before, the residual efficacy. So you can get a graph on the residual efficacy. ITN campaigns, same thing. No, I'm going to go into details, but you get also coverage, uh, distributed nets. You can monitor the people per net, so number of pet nets. Uh, per person uh, for the different areas uh, and a summary of the campaign. So just to show you that there is a lot of uh, visualizations that you can have and a lot of dashboards that you can, you can create. Now I want to go straight away into uh, the training app. And I'm going to show you this one because it's going to be very useful for you to come into this demo and click on this training app to learn how to use, how to use this DHS2 system to collect data or to create these graphs. So you have to, to come into the training application, you have to come into the menu, which is up here. Let me make it a bit bigger. You have the menu, which is this little square with the smaller squares, and you have to type training. You want to get training. You click on the training app, and you are going to be taken to a tutorial. Uh, so, it's telling you here is your progress. My progress is zero, zero, zero. I haven't done anything yet. 
Um, uh, but I can select one of these tutorials to learn how to collect data. So we are going to learn today CAPTCHA, CAPTCHA, CAPTCHA to capture data. So we are going to learn this application. So we will be coming into a tutorial that is welcoming us, explaining us what is this tutorial about, and we can click and start tutorial. It will tell you what is the tutorial going to cover. It's going to show you how to select the location uh, where you are collecting the data, how to select the data collection form here called program. We are making this language a little bit simple now. Uh, select, uh, it's going to show you how to select other data, enter the data in the data collection form, uh, mark the form as complete, uh, save and submit the form, um, see the data that you have entered and download it if you want. So let's start it. The first thing we have to do when we use DHIS2 to, to enter data is to select where the data is coming from. So for example, maybe I've got a site in my country that is called uh, Oviedo, and I am entering data for this site. So as you see in the GIF, the GIF is telling me select from the menu on the left, the name of the Sentinel site, the district name or whatever I have, uh, the, however I have called my Sentinel site. So I click on it, following the instructions here, you have a bit of text explanation as well. I click on it and then I go to the next step, step two, which is select your program. My program is my data collection form. And if I, if I click on the list of programs, I see a lot of different data collection forms that are available in these modules. We have a form for discriminating concentration bioassays for adult surveillance uh, from the field, read insights mapping, read insights tracking over time, intensity concentration bioassays, uh, individual mosquito data. So this mosquito is to collect individual mosquito data uh, for synergies insecticide bioassays, for IRS campaigns, for residual efficacy of IRS, a lot of different of the activities that we've seen before. So I'll click on discriminating concentration bioassays because that's the that's a very important one to monitor insecticide resistance and is the type of data that we ask uh, you to report to WHO because of the importance of this in insecticide resistance on a, on a yearly basis. Now, um, in this case, I have another option. I can categorize this data by the institution that collected it. Uh, you can enable or disable this option. Uh, we put it there because we thought it's useful because there is a lot of partners and institutions collecting this data. So you may want to know within your country uh, for each data provided to enter into the system, who collected it. So let's say the Ministry of Health collected this data. Uh, so I need to continue following the, the tutorial. So yeah, that is showing you how to select the category of the data. And then the tutorial is going to explain you how to enter new data, uh, data in a new form. So it's telling you, okay, you have to click on new. Let's see the GIF again. You have to click on new to get the data collection form. So we are clicking on new up here, new event that will open a new data collection form. There is a bit of jargon in DHIS2 that is there that is maybe difficult to understand. That's why we have the tutorial so that you know where to click uh, at every time. Uh, before I click, I want to show you that in, in the middle, we got a table which is empty, no items to display. This is a table where when I start entering data, discriminating concentration by OSA data, for the Sentinel site, this data, this table will start showing me all the data collection forms I have completed. So we will see that in a minute. So I click on new event following my, my GIF, new event, and I get a data collection form. This is the way it appears in, the, in, a, in a computer. It is a little bit different on, a, on, a mobile phone, on the mobile phone application, but it's a little bit more beautiful, I think, actually, in the mobile phone application than in the computer. But it's, uh, it's simple. We have sections in our data collection form, and then we have variables. Uh, we have the first section in the case of discriminating concentration bioessays, where we are going to fill in the bioessay date. When was this bioessay conducted? And I'm going to say it was today. I am doing my bioessay in the insectary, and I want to fill in the information. Then we have uh, test details. So I have to click on uh, the type of test that I used. If I use WHO tube test or CDC water bioassays for this bioassay, let's say WHO tube test. 
there are things that are going to be automatically completed. And these things are also explained in, in, the, in the tutorial. The some fields will be automatically completed based on my choices, on my previous choices. Then we have to fill in the insecticide. Uh, let's think we have uh, done a test with alpha thipermetrin. In this case, the class is going to be also automatically selected. It's by retro, it's my class. Then I have to select exposure time, which in general is uh, one hour, 60 minutes. Uh, it's open because now we are getting new insecticides and this may change, but uh, for now it's always one hour. You can type in here the humidity and the temperature during the exposure. Um, so let me, hopefully my humidity was recommended in the recommended range and my temperature as well, for example. And then I go into the next section, which uh, is information about the species that I am testing. So here we have vector species tested and we can say maybe um, actually a Stefensi. Maybe I'm testing a Stefensi, Stefensi. Uh, I'm also using Stefensi as my control, maybe. And this is the year when I collected these mosquitoes. These mosquitoes participate, participated in the test, maybe uh, 2020. The month when I collected the mosquitoes could be February, for example. The year, um, sorry, this is gonna be this year. The year when I finished collecting the mosquitoes, and this is important if you start collecting mosquitoes at the end of December, and then you finish in January. That's why we have the starting year and the end year, just in case it's that end of the year period when you are doing this. Uh, the month uh, of end of the mosquito collection, um, February. So in this case, I did everything in February. The states and origin, with which mosquitoes am I using for this discriminating concentration bioassay? Uh, am I using odols, which are the progeny of wild collected odols, for example? So I just choose the option. The age of the mosquito tested, hopefully the recommended age, three to five days. And then I'm gonna go into how many mosquitoes I managed to have for my test. How many have I used in my test? So these are the number of exposed, the mosquitoes that will go into the exposure tubes. So we recommend 100, but usually it's difficult to get the exact 100. We get maybe 98. Uh, and the number of controls. The recommendation now is 50 uh, in two tubes. But maybe because it's difficult to get the exact amount, maybe I got 51, for example. Uh, time at which knockdown was observed, uh, one hour after starting the exposure. And then we can we have a section to fill in the number of mosquitoes knocked down. This is optional, you can do it or not, depending if you want to calculate the knockdown rate or you don't want to. But I'll fill it in now. Number of mosquitoes knocked down, maybe 65. And knockdown from the control, only one. Uh, and then I go into a section of the mortality results. So I'm gonna type here the results uh, at the end of um, at the observation time, which is usually 24 hours after exposure. So a number of deaths among mosquitoes, among exposed mosquitoes, uh, let's say uh, 2072. And mortality will be calculated automatically, considering the number of deaths and the number of exposed. Uh, number of dead a month control, two. And then the mortality in the controls will be also calculated automatically. And then the mortality will be calculated, the overall mortality adjusted by the control mortality, if necessary, will also be calculated automatically by the system. Then we can have a section if we want, or again, optional, uh, to indicate who collected the data. So maybe the national malaria control program. Uh, or the National Institute of Health or whoever collected the data uh, program. If these results have been published in a journal, yes, no. If so, which is the journal? All of this is optional and in the country, maybe you don't need it. We, we keep track of this uh, globally, but you may not need this in your countries. And then the test outcomes, the result of this test is going to be also automatically calculated. So based on my mortality, which is 73%, I know that my mosquitoes uh, are resistant to alpha, alpha thipermetrin. So it will show up here. It will judge automatically the result of the test and is confirmed resistance. Uh, if, I com if I have completed everything, I can click on complete event and uh, save the form. If I only manage to fill in maybe the knockdown rate because I am filling this form as, the, as I do the test, I could have filled in knockdown save the form, 
save the form and come back to the form later to complete the mortality results. So that's something you can also do. So now uh, I, I am assuming I just finished the test and these are my final results. So yes, it's complete. And I can save an exit to start entering data for a new Sentinel site or for a new type of essay or a new type of activity for the same Sentinel site. Or I can uh, save and add another, another form, which is another uh, same data collection form for maybe another test that I did with the same mosquitoes uh, for the same Sentinel site, no? same type of test, same, same Sentinel site. If I have more mosquitoes that I have tested, I can fill in a new, a new form. So I'm going to click on Save and Exit now. And I will go back to that screen that we saw at the beginning that had an empty table. Remember, this table was empty. Now the table has results. Uh, I'm going to move this a, a bit down. The table has results. So I see my first uh, data collection form here. Uh, it's a WHO, WHO tube test with alpha cypermethrin conducted with an office defensive in this year, blah, blah, blah. And I can include more columns if I want. Uh, clicking in the settings, I can decide to include in the table the insecticide class, for example, or the exposure time. And this will be added to my table. So I'll always be able to, by selecting the site and selecting the data collection form, I can see all the data that has been previously reported. So I have like a little inventory of all my tests. And you can download this information in, in Excel. So you can download the data and you will get this table as it is in the screen, but on a, a, well, different formats, but maybe the easiest is uh, Excel, uh, CSV. So you get a little uh, CSV file where you have uh, this summary. Um, I'll show you if my Excel wants to work. There we go. So we get a, 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 a table with uh, the results. Of course, the format of these ones is not super friendly. So we will see another way of doing this uh, in a minute. But you can get that information right away in your computer for analysis in statistical software or everywhere, everywhere you want. Now, okay, we have a, we now have a, a data collection form in, inside. So this is an option to enter data in DHIS2. The other option is to get an Excel template, fill in this information in the Excel template, and upload the information into the HIS2. That's another one that we are going to see now. So um, I mentioned there is a, another tool with, which lives inside of the HIS2, and it's called um, bulk load. Let me go back to the main page. I really hope this bulk load is installed. Yeah, there we go. So this bulk load is an application that allows us to upload a lot of test results in one go. So if we have data in paper and we are copying the data from papers, from, from paper sheets, uh, we, we may not want to go one by one filling in data uh, through this electronic form. We may want to copy paste and fill the information a bit faster into an Excel. Or if we are getting data from a partner, the same thing, right? There is also a tutorial for bulk loads. So you can also have the step-by-step -step process uh, and I'll show you which one it is uh, described in this tutorial so that you can follow step-by-step. -step. And this is called bulk load here. That's another tutorial that you can follow and it will actually just take you directly without you having to look for the application. It will take you directly into the application uh, and show you how the, the application works. So the same thing, step-by-step. -step, what do we need to do? to use bulk load with a little animation showing you step-by-step step, uh, where you have to click. I'll minimize this. So um, this is bulk load and it's going to help me download the template. And very important, the template can be an empty one where I can enter fresh data, new data, or it can be a template that also contains the data that is in the system already, the, the data that I have entered for a specific data collection form. So it's a good way to download the data from the HIS2 and it's a good way to import the data to the HIS2. So you may not see as, as an end user, you may not see all of these settings and themes and I see them because I am a, a system administrator. I have a bit more rights. So first of all, I'm gonna use my, uh, select my template. So I'm going to select my entomology discriminating concentration bioassay, the same one we were using right now. And then I'm going to select uh, the Sentinel sites for which I am going to enter data. So I am just going to select, uh, 
my Sentinel sites, which are at district level, right? So if all your Sentinel sites are uh, at some level of the hierarchy, this is maybe a little bit more complicated to understand, but this is my country, this will be the name of my provinces, and these are the names of my districts. So it's like the third level in my hierarchy. So I could uh, say, I want to have all the districts in my data collection forms. I will select here district and click on select. And you see that I have 16 districts or 16 Sentinel sites, and they have all been selected automatically by the HIS2. So, okay, I have now my. You can select the language. Sorry, the person. Ah. Mute it. <laughs> Somebody working with LLINs, can you mute yourself? Abu, ask them in our bank. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. So, okay, so then we can select the language. And this is quite important because something that I didn't mention, this system can be translated into any language practically that you want. Uh, it is now, translations are available in English, French, Spanish, and a bit in Portuguese, not, not the whole thing, but part of it is in Portuguese. But if you want to translate it into Arabic, you can translate all of this into Arabic. Uh, maybe Samira and, and the colleagues in Embro can help as well. And half all of this that I am showing you on the screen in Arabic, that is, that is totally possible. Uh, so you select the language, you see the list of languages. It's a really long list of languages. I'm just going to keep doing everything in English for now. Uh, and then there is an option here to populate the template with data, if you want to get data that exists in the HIS2 already, or, or not. And if not, I'm gonna get an empty template. So I'm going to populate the template because I think it's important for you to see how the data appears in, in the Excel, because it will help you understand how to fill in the data, yeah? So when I click on, I want data on this template, I can select data from when to when. I can select the period for which I want data to appear in my Excel. So I'm going to go back in time. I'm going to go back to 2018, because maybe I want to see all the bio essays that I uh, completed for the last two or three years, right? So that you see that you can select uh, long periods of time. Let me go to 1st of January, 2018, until today. I want to download all of this data. So download template. I have to wait. I have to wait more if my internet connection is poor uh, and, and my computer is old, unless if my computer is a bit newer and the internet connection is a bit better. So maybe you need to be a little bit patient depend, depending on where you are. And I got here my Excel file. Again, all of this is explained step by step in the tutorial. So you've got this tutorial that is doing the same thing I'm doing step by step. So here we got uh, our um, data collection form. It's a simple, simple, simple Excel file. Nothing complicated about it. Uh, the areas in, in colors, first the colors can be modified. You can change the colors. You can make these templates have uh, the logo of your institutions. You can decide which color they appear. But all of that is settings that I don't want to go now into. Uh, but uh, you will get a form like this. Uh, we have here the title. This is a template to fill in discriminating concentration bio essays. There is a bunch of things here that you don't need to look at because this, all, this is all for the HIS2 to be able to import the data. You're only interested in data entry. And we have the following. We have the Sentinel sites. And because I selected 16, I'm going to get here a drop-down menu with the 16 Sentinel sites. Maybe I need to make this a bit bigger, like that. We have uh, all our uh, Sentinel sites, and I just need to choose one. For example, this one, Salamanca. I have the reporting institution. So you see here, I have a menu with several reporting institutions. I have Institute Pasteur, PSI, Generic Partner, because I don't know the name. I have PMI Vector Link. I have publications. I have a lot of different um, uh, sources of this data. Uh, you, can, you can add yours. You can add the names of the institutions that are working with you in your country. Uh, we have the unique identifier, we forget about this, we don't need to know much about it, it's just that the system is going to us, uh, give each of the data collection forms a unique identifier, so we don't need to do anything about it. And here is where we are starting to fill in 
the data, the actual data. So we have the bioassay date. So if I want to add a new bioassay, I'm just going to type uh, and be like, okay, this one was done the day after, on the 5th of February, tomorrow, right? And then each of the columns uh, is a, a different variable of the ones that appear in the digital, in the digital data collection form. And you will have options the same way you had options to choose when we were filling in the digital form, you have now options here as well. So we are imagining this time we are doing a CDC bottle bioessay. Uh, here you will have a list of the insecticides, all of the ones that you have configured in the system, or in this case, we, we have configured all of this for you. So it's already uh, ready to be installed. So I'm going to select, um, I don't know, maybe alpha cipermetrin, this one, 12.5 uh, uh, micrograms. In this case, because it's Excel, it's not going to automatically populate the form. So that's a little disadvantage of using Excel. But the advantage is that, is that you can copy paste the values from the previous uh, rows. You have uh, the test details. So we have, uh, we continue with the time at which mortality was observed. So normally for 24 hours for now, most of the time. Exposure time, uh, because it's bot uh, bottle bio essays. Sorry, this is bottle bio essays. So I'm saying something that is wrong. It's 30 minutes for bottle bio essays. Uh, humidity, maybe 80 this time. Temperature, 28.5. Uh, we go and continue following in the species, right? So species, uh, what about which species? Well, I, I'll use again Stefensite, copy-pasting. Stefensite for control, copy-pasting as well. Same like a month when we did all of this. So maybe um, I started collecting these mosquitoes in January. I can also, if if I type something, it's gonna tell me, oh, this is not a valid value because I, there is a drop-down menu and you have to select from the drop-down menu. Very good to avoid typing mistakes. Um, 2021, um, and we finished collecting the mosquitoes in February, for example. Just inventing all of this, eh? Uh, is uh, maybe from wild collected larvae. So I'm using mosquitoes from wild collected larvae, which are three to five days old again. And here I can come into number of mosquitoes used, maybe, I don't know, 89 mosquitoes used, controls uh, 12, uh, time at which knockdown was observed, uh, maybe not relevant, but I can just say 13 minutes right after the test, although this for water bio essays is, is not that relevant, we can actually, we can leave it blank so that you see what happens. Just leave it blank. Number of uh, death, a month, death mosquitoes a month exposed, uh, I'm gonna say um, 64. Uh, again, because we are on Excel, the mortality is not going to be calculated automatically as it was before. So in this case, you will have to calculate it yourself or copy paste it from wherever you have it. So here we have 64 out of 89. That's gonna be uh, 71.9, so 71.9 mortality. Number of death control mosquitoes, maybe one. The mortality in the control mosquitoes, 83%. I'm just calculating this on the fly. And the adjusted mortality is going to be because the mortality in the control, sorry, the control mosquitoes is one of, yes, 8.3%. And here we'll have to calculate the adjusted mortality by a bot, uh, just to save time and just not going to do it. I'm going to assume it's a bit lower than, than this one, but you will have to calculate it. Uh, and again, the data is collected by the National Malaria Control Program. It's not published, although you can leave all of this blank as well. And you also will have to type manually the test result. So this is a disadvantage of using Excel, that the automatic calculations are not there, You can are not done. But the advantage is that you can copy paste and you can Quickly, if you have a lot of tests with confirmed resistance, you can quickly populate all the bio essays like that. Uh, go back. There we go. So maybe we have confirmed resistance again. And resistance frequency is another thing that we will have to calculate. This is 100 minus, uh, or, or leave it blank. This 100 minus that, 28.2. And that's it. So we would have com uh, completed one. Uh, the results of one bio essay, a new one. A new one that is maybe also 
than in here, yeah, um, five more minutes. Right. Okay. So you can save the template. Uh, I'm gonna save it. Save it in my downloads. And what you can do then is you can import it. So you can import all of this data, uh, regardless of how many uh, essays you have. Maybe you have 30 essays. You can come to import data in workload. This is also explained in the tutorial. And you can just drag and drop the file. So I'm going to get my file from my computer and drag and drop it. And then the system is going to read the file. It's going to tell me I'm creating one and updating one that existed already. So if you have made changes to correct information on the previous data that you reported, they will also be recorded, the changes that you make. And then I can click on import data. Uh, this is uh, a failing. This is mainly because we are on a training instance and some features are not available. So I'll try to make that available for you so that when you try, it is there. Um, sorry for that. I knew this was gonna happen, but anyway. I'll try it again just in case we are lucky. Uh, no, it's failing, sorry. Uh, it's just that some features are not available in the demo yet. Um, so we will have to, you will have to believe me that the data is imported and then it goes into, into DHIS2. Now in the last four minutes that we have, I'm going to go back to the dashboards and I'm going to go to the place where you can uh, create these maps or create these uh, tables. So. Um, maybe I'm just gonna show you how to create um, a table for insecticide resistance. Let's go, let's go to this table. This table is something that I configure once in my life. Uh, then I create a dashboard by clicking on create dashboard. And I say, I'm creating a dashboard to paste in here, insecticide resistance results. That's the name of my dashboard. Save changes. And I get an empty dashboard with nothing where I can start including graphs, maps, and tables. Where can I make my graph, my, my, my tables, and my um, maps? So there are different applications. And again, you don't need to know which one to use. You can always come to the training app. You can come to the training app. And you can say, I want to create a map, maps. So you will click on maps, and it will take you to a tutorial uh, that will take you directly to the place uh, where you can, let me minimize it, where you can uh, create a map. So this is a little interface to create a map uh, where you can add the layer. Uh, you can add a layer, a thematic layer, or you can add individual events. For example, if you are collecting breeding sites, you may want to just pin the breeding sites that you have visited by creating an event uh, layer, etc. But like, yeah, I will need to give you a bit more training and you will have to see the tutorial to understand all of this. But if you create a thematic layer, you can select the indicators that you are going to um, present in this layer. Uh, for example, indicators related to discriminating concentration by OSS. Uh, you can select uh, there's a lot of indicators in here, but let's say um, uh, mortality to pyrethroids, all the species together. These indicators are also there in the system already for you. Uh, so uh, somebody has, we have created them for you. If you want to add more indicators, we can help you create more indicators so that they're automatically appearing in the menu. Um, and then we have to select the period. Uh, so do I want to uh, have um, my data for three years displayed on the map or for two years or for one year? Uh, the places for which, which I want to show in my map. So maybe I only want to show Oviedo, this one site that we were working on. Or maybe I just want to show my entire country and I can select the, the entire country or I want to have everything and see what happens. No? And I can just click without going into filters. I can just click on add layer. It will tell me uh, yearly, maybe I want to show my results yearly, annually. Where is it yesterday? Like five years, okay. And I will get a map. What do I get in this map? I get uh, my results per district because I selected country, uh, province, and district. So I'm getting the results per district, but I'm also getting the exact points, the exact locations 
of my Sentinel sites. If I want to see only my Sentinel sites, here I will unselect province and country and just keep my districts, which may be called Sentinel sites in, in your DHIS tools in the future. And I'll just get the, the results of the Sentinel sites. This is a legend showing me the mortality, but we have a custom layer, a better layer, uh, a legend, sorry, that will uh, color the points in green, red, or yellow, depending on the results of the test. So I can click on using a predefined style and go and look for my legends, which are important, legends, and click on my legend for showing insecticide resistance status. Update layer. And now my legend becomes three colors for confirmed, possible, and susceptible. Okay, I'm just gonna save this map, save it, and give it a title. Insecticide resistance, Lucia demo. That's for, for us to easily identify it. And I save it. Now this map now becomes available for me to include it in my dashboard. And this is the last thing I'm showing. This is Samira, I'm just finishing here. So I had my, I'm clicking all the time in this icon to go back, yeah? Have you seen that? I'm always clicking on the little DHIS2 icon to go back to the main page, to the dashboard page. So now I have my, my dashboard that I created and it's empty. Uh, and now I have one, my first visualization that I can add. So I can edit the dashboard to add this visualization. So I edit and then I have here something that says, search for items to add to this dashboard. I'm going to search for Lucia demo. There we go. And here is telling me, oh, there is a map available with this name. It's called Lucia demo. I can click on it and it's going to be added to my dashboard. Not only added, I can also make it bigger or make it smaller. Or I can, if I have more items, I can organize them. For example, I'm going to add a, a few things. For example, this one, I'm gonna add the graph that I had in there as well. So I can organize the position of all of these items in the dashboard the way I want to display them. And then once I am happy, I can save the changes. And this dashboard is going to be there every time I come into the HS2. It's done, it's there. If I add more data, because for example, this map is showing data for the last uh, five years. If I add more data for, the, for this year, it will start to appear automatically in this map. I don't have it, I don't have to do it again. This map, as you saw, is a map that uh, presents the data for different years. So I can actually click on the different years and see the data for the specific years. I could also combine the data and, and have the status across all the years. No, there's a lot of things you can do with the maps. But just in, I wanted to show you in principle how the HS2 works. So just to finish, we've seen how we can enter data. We can uh, look for a Sentinel site, look for a data collection form, and type data into the data collection form. We've seen how we can get an Excel template of that data collection form, uh, copy the results of many, many IOSs that we've done, and import the data back into the system. And uh, we've saw how to create a new dashboard with whatever name we want to give it, how to make a map, and then how to pin the map to this dashboard so that it appears always there when we come into the system. I know it's a, it's a quite um, fast uh, introduction of DHIS2. It's a lot of things to digest. 